In this video, I'm going to talk about the different roles that video plays online. This should help you decide on a role for your video. I'm also going to talk about when sounds become pictures, so turning audio into video, and the role of shots and sequence in online video creation. So here are really what I would say are, are not just four roles that video plays online, but actually four different stages, um, kind of levels of complexity that are involved in creating video for the web and for social media. The first stage is creating a video to illustrate a story in the same way that you might use a picture. This might be simply raw footage or looping video. The second type of video is a, a video that adds something to the story in the same way that you might link to an explanation or a full transcript of an interview. In this way, for example, you might add a video in a story that has an interview that relates to the central story, or it might be an explanation of something, some concept involved in the story. At the third level, you might be distilling a whole story into a much shorter visual version of that. The simplest example of this is reading out the headlines, but um, this might simply be a 10 second version of a three minute TV package, for example, or just as a trailer, for example, distills a story from a two hour film. And finally, you might create a video to tell the story itself to be a standalone story. It might be a three minute video, a 30 minute video, something like that. And I'm going to show you a number of examples of each of these types of videos or videos that perform these roles to give you lots of ideas to work with. So here, for example, is um, a piece of video which simply illustrates the news. This is footage of a fire. If we're writing a story about a fire, this is all we might need. It, as I said, it performs the same role as a photograph. There's no commentary, there's no editing. It simply is a moving picture. Here's another example. This is um, a piece of video of some quicksand, which I've also mentioned in a previous video. And again, this is simply showing what's happening. It, it, it's something visual in the story that's being demonstrated. Um, but again, unedited, there's not much audio, there's no narration, there's a little bit of speech from the person involved. Another illustration, another example is this story by um, an MA student, uh, Ian Mates, who um, created a time lapse of him queuing up to um, vote in the Romanian elections. So it's only six seconds long and it just illustrates that process of voting or at least waiting to vote in the election and the size of the queue. The next level, the next type of role is uh, adding to a story. So this is where you commonly might insert a video into the middle of a story in order to provide some extra information. Um, in this example, this is a very famous story called Snowfall about an avalanche. We have an interview with one of the survivors of the avalanche uh, early on in the story. And in fact, as you go through the story, there are different video clips, some of them interviews, some of them uh, footage, some of it's illustrative. Um, and again, these add to the story. You can still experience the story without watching these videos. And that's a crucial element in the way that this type of video is used. It's normally extra rather than central to the story. And the reader can choose to watch this video or to just stay with the main track of the story. Let me uh, show you this example. So here's Snowfall, we scroll down through the story itself and then eventually we get to this first video. So when you create this sort of video, this sort of video content, interestingly it's not currently available, um, you need to make sure that you are um, not relying on the audience watching the video. Uh, you might not even refer to it at all in the same way that you don't refer to a photograph. Here's another example. This is from a story, an ITV story, and we've got again the text and then uh, an interview in the middle of it. Now, the quotes in the story 
are probably taken from this interview. And again, you can read the story without having to watch the video. But what's indicated here, what's implied, is that if you want to see these quotes being said, then you can play the video to see the full interview and the context in which they were said. One other way you might use this approach is to create a series of small uh, video pieces. This is a, a YouTube channel on um, for Fortune magazine, and when they do interviews with business leaders, they uh, ask them about their breakthrough moment in leadership. It's a single question. The videos, as a result, are nice and short, so this one's only 95 seconds long, and most are around this length. And this is a, a good way of thinking quite strategically about this type of video content. In a story, we might have a full interview with this person. And the way that we might approach this editorially is we're going to do an interview with this person, but we're going to make sure that we film the answer to one question in that interview. Or we might film a number of different answers to different questions, but film them as separate clips. Those clips then, can be embedded in the article, so we can add some extra video content to the article if people want to watch them. But also we can use those clips as a, a theme, a theme channel on YouTube. So we can have a series of videos where we've always asked the same person, uh, sorry, different people the same question, as in this example. Or we might put them on social media as a little taster for the story, a little uh, key moment, which we'll come on to. So in this way, you can think about how your story is going to play on multiple platforms. You've got the video clip and its role within the article, but also the same clip's role on YouTube or on Twitter or on Facebook. Sometimes the, the video is quite central to the story. Um, this is a, a story about people wearing heels for a day, and we can see the videos right at the top. Um, but you can also write a story about the events of the video and just happen to embed the video in it. You can use this sort of approach for threads on Twitter. This is an example, this is another former student. Um, Charlotte writes a thread, which is essentially a story in a number of different parts. And part four has a clip of an interview with one of the people in the story. So again, it's used in a similar way. In this case, it's a bit more integral to the story than some of the other examples we've seen. And um, this is an example from radio where the um, radio show has taken the answer to one question and made a recording of that and used that for social. Now at this point, we're moving from the video having the role of adding to the story, as in the previous examples, now this video is actually distilling the story. So uh, because this lives on its own on social media, it's not part of a bigger um, story in the way that these are. Even Twitter threads are a, a story. Now this is living on its own and um, it's starting to distill the story into the answer to a key question. And this is where we're starting to get into how stories exist on different platforms. The story of the radio show was a full interview, but the story on social media is just one key question. It's been boiled down to that. And if we uh, watch that, see if I can bring it up. Here we go. You can see, first of all, that um, we've got two cameras and we're able to cut between those two pieces of video. Um, we're not cutting live. These two have been filmed at the same time and then an editorial decision has been made. Let's pick one of the most interesting parts of the show and let's get the two um, pieces of video. Let's get the two sections that we want and then cut them so that we can tell the story of that interview. Now, of course, I'd, I'd encourage you to watch the um, watch all the videos in these slides, so you can click through to these links in the slides, and you can you can see the sound, you can listen to the sound as well. But a couple of points to make about this: first of all, the com composition of the image isn't quite right. So, because these are fixed 
cameras, they've had to kind of guess where the guest is going to be and try to position them in the frame as best they can. So really this person's head would ideally be higher up and um, probably a little bit to the right as well. Uh, so the, the images aren't composed as well as they can be. And you might want to take a bit more control than these people have in terms of making sure that these shots are better composed when you put them together. So that's one example of distilling and, and also an example of audio being turned into video, radio being turned into video. The headliner app is a good place to go, um, first of all, for a tool to do this, but also for lots of examples of media organisations using this approach. In the gallery, you've got a number of examples of different ways of turning audio into video. In some cases, it's a simple waveform. In some cases, there's an image in the background. In some cases, there's illustration. So here we've got an image of the person speaking, some captions and a waveform. In this example, we've got some illustration of what's being said. And this is a very amusing clip from a podcast. Distilling can also be done by taking clips from a TV package or a video package. This is an example of a um, package for BBC Inside Out. And if we watch it, you can see that it's firstly very short. And uh, secondly, there's actually a number of different shots here. So it's only about 17 seconds. But if I go back, we've got shot one. Shot two, shot three, shot four, so four shots. And this variety of shot is worth highlighting and emphasizing when it comes to distilling a story. Um, because at this point you're getting into edited video with uh, if you're illustrating a story or adding to a story you can probably get away with single shot videos but when you're getting to distilling and telling the story you're probably going to need to do some editing and consider variety of shots so when you go out to shoot a video for this then make sure you're getting a variety of shots some close-ups some wide shots um, and then you've got material that you can edit the actual audio track of that particular clip is a consistent audio track. It's one chunk of the interview. That's unedited, if you like. But the shots that are played over that interview, we have three different shots that are played, and then it ends on the shot that the actual audio is taken from, which takes up about half of the time. But that speed of editing keeps the readers engaged, and starting with a nice close-up brings them straight into the story before we pan out to the final shot where we can see the person being interviewed. You can edit even in um, six seconds. This is an example of a, a Vine video done by a former student and it's almost like stop motion. So we've got a number of shots stitched together over six seconds and it's a really good illustration of just how much editing you can do even within six seconds. And you can do this within Instagram's camera as well. Now we move on to telling the story itself and uh, one example of this is this AJ Plus story about uh, a drowned Syrian boy. Um, this uh, got millions of views on social media um, and it's also almost entirely made of still images so it's worth watching as an example of modern video production techniques but don't necessarily need original footage or moving images. Most of the images are taken from illustrations, from tweets, uh, there are some still photos, news photos and um, a little bit of footage right at the end which probably I think is library footage but again um, this is just put together, it's edited together to tell this particular story. Another example here from the Guardian's Instagram account, 
telling an explainer of a particular issue. And this says uh, presenter led. So there's a presenter involved, very tightly cropped, very, very tight shot, very close up um, with other material. Uh, a lot of it user generated content. So we've got raw footage coming in here as well. So again, worth watching and thinking about the editorial decisions being made in terms of how they're going to tell this story, where they're getting the material to be able to tell it. And finally, it's worth making a point about platforms and the nature of different platforms. We've looked at videos on YouTube, video on Twitter, video on Facebook, video on Instagram, and there are other platforms as well. And uh, often different platforms have different um, qualities and people consume content in different ways on those. It's often said that Facebook tends to do, uh, video tends to do better on Facebook if it's about personal identity um, and it's, it's social content, whereas YouTube is more about consuming video and a platform like Vimeo has a very different audience again. And you can click on that link to find out more about what BuzzFeed have learned about these techniques. Um, and, and one example to show you as well to highlight um, other approaches that can be taken. This was a, a, a video done by Stylist magazine where British men decided to try some high heels for a day. So they took some people, some uh, men who worked in the office, persuaded them to wear high heels for a day and made a video of the process. So they filmed the people as they wore heels. Now the video was made first and then a story was made about the video rather than a story made and then a video added to it, as in the BuzzFeed, BuzzFeed example earlier about heels. So it's a good example of a very similar story to the BuzzFeed heel story, but done in a different way and done probably quite strategically to try and build, to kind of create a viral video. Up here you can see the tweet featuring the video. It was also on YouTube and there's a link to the Facebook version as well. And it's worth watching all three to see the slight differences in the way that they're made. The Facebook version, for example, has captions which are different to the YouTube version. And the text surrounding all three is different too, as well. And again, it's really worth emphasizing with online video, text is part of the process. You need to not just create the video, but write the text for the description and any titles, things like that. So in the YouTube version, we've got a, a title, British Men Try High Heels for a Day, and we've got a description and also some credits and other information here, some uh, calls to readers to subscribe as well. On Twitter, it's slightly different. We made the men of the office wear heels for a day, all in the name of equality. Notice that's very, that's quite different to the YouTube approach. So it's telling us a little story before it goes into the video. And Facebook again is slightly different. And then in the in the publication, we've got the story later on that, that about it. Interestingly, the actual video comes quite low down in the story. I'm not sure that's the right approach, but that's what they did. Perhaps they wanted people reading for longer before they got to the actual video. So what can you do now with these techniques? Well, one really useful exercise is to take those four roles of an online video and try and think about how you can create videos that perform that role for a story that you've written or a story that you're planning to write or tell. So uh, you might be uh, writing a story and you can use a video to illustrate it in some way, in the same way as pictures do. Have a think about what type of video might do that. What type of video might add something to the story, like a full interview or an explainer, or just the answer to one question, or even a behind the scenes insight into the process behind your story? How might you distill the story that you've told? So boiling down a longer video into a shorter one for social or boiling down a long story into a short video version of it. And finally, how might you tell the story through video alone? So that would be a full story rather than a shorter one for social. Um, it might be three minutes. It might indeed just be 60 seconds, but that is the story.
think about that for a story that you've worked on or would like to work on and use it to inform your editorial decision making. Ultimately, you're going to be choosing what's practical and what justifies the effort. So some key points to round up here. First of all, decide what role your video is playing. Is it there just to illustrate what you've written or the story that you're telling? Or is it there to tell the story itself entirely? Think about the type of video that you're using. Is it to put the audience in a particular place where a story is happening? Is it to provide a first person perspective? Is it using raw footage? Is it showing or explaining something? And finally, unless you're doing video that's illustrating something or adding a piece of information or live video, then go out and shoot to edit. In other words, shoot not just one shot, but a range of shots so you have material to cut together to create a sequence, to create a story that's got pace, that's got um, some consideration of temporality and the timing of the ingredients that are being used. And of course, film a range of different shots, close-ups, medium shots, long shots, so that you've got that um, option in your editing.